while it's true the city does have more bonded indebtedness today than it did 10 years ago, about three quarters of that debt is actually not paid for by the general fund out of property tax or sales taxes. About three quarters is paid for by someone else. For example, the convention center was built by the city, but it is paid for 100% by the hotel and hotel prepared food taxes. So you have the visitors paying for that, not the residents here. <coughs> Likewise, about half of the debt is water and sewer debt, uh, including the other towns in our system, the other five towns. And that is paid for out of the water and sewer revenues, not out of your general taxes. So actually, uh, of, the, of the indebtedness we have, only one quarter actually comes from the general fund. Uh, secondly, all of the bonds have been for capital projects. We're not like the federal government that, that uh, you know, it spends money and then borrows for it. These are all capital projects, whether it be greenways, roads, parks, uh, affordable housing, things like that, uh, new, the new water treatment plant. That's what this, this money has gone toward, toward things that, uh, that we really have needed. And actually, we do need more capital projects as this bond issue reflects. So it's all gone for that. Uh, two other things. Uh, first of all, the, the debt is all funded. That is, the current tax rate will amortize all the debt as well as the current water and sewer rates. So that's uh, it's not as though there's some big thing about to come up. It's all funded, and should this bond issue pass uh, this fall, then it will get funded next spring when the tax rates adjust to that. In terms of our relative position, let me just give you a couple of figures. Uh, for the, most of the larger cities in North Carolina, they spend about 12% of their operating budget uh, on paying down their debt service. So of their, their total operating budget is 12%. We pay 10%, because we have less debt than the other, other cities. For example, we have about a third of the debt that what Charlotte has, even though Charlotte is only 50% more. The other thing to keep in mind is, if you want to sort of look at sort of the federal situation, we have a debt limit imposed by the state law, which is 8% of our tax base. We are currently at 21% of our debt limit, because we could borrow uh, four times or five times as much if we were sort of so inclined. I'm not suggesting we do that, uh, but we're, we're in a very conservative, very strong position we have a strong AAA rating from all three agencies. Um, so our, our debt situation is, is very manageable, and there are projects we're undertaking that we need, like the projects up here. So if there are any questions about that, uh, you, know, the, you should have a sheet that gives you information about that. Uh, I really haven't heard much pushback. I heard the one campaign talking about that some. I think they're calming down now that they're learning what the, what the real information is. I think the public understands that while he's in a very strong uh, fiscal situation, we've always been conservatively managed. We still are. Uh, and that's where we intend to stay. Uh, but we're, we're, in a, we're in a good spot in terms of debt, and we're not going to let it get out of hand. So I just wanted to comment on that. In terms of what I'm hearing, I'm hearing that uh, there are civic groups that are getting the presentation. Uh, that's going well. People are understanding what's going on. People are very pleased to hear that sidewalks will not be their problem. I mean, someone else's problem going forward. You know, as, a, as mayor, when you have these uh, sidewalk assessment hearings, that's not always the best day of your, of your best time to do that, <laughs> put it that way. Because people are understanding why am I paying to I either install or improve the sidewalk when you know, my neighbors use, you know, I might pay for it. And of course the answer is, well, they're right. I mean, it really is part of the city system, so uh, that, that will change things. In terms of our transportation, I think people understand that the Greenway system is, is not just recreation, it's almost also some transportation and an increasing bus service. Uh, we now have about 50% more riders on the bus system than we had three or four years ago. And we do need to upgrade the system uh, throughout the, the area. So uh, that, that would be a good thing as well. So let me, let me stop there. Let me thank you for doing this. Uh, please reach out to people. The way voters work is this, and this is my experience. People don't vote just because they get one piece of mail or hear one comment. It's usually three or four contacts with the voter, and all of a sudden they say, okay, I get it, I'm gonna vote for that bond issue. And it may be an email they get from you, maybe a yard sign they see at the neighbor's house, and maybe it's what someone says to them. But after they get through those three or four little touches, then all of a sudden, uh, they get on board. It's, it's typically not just one thing, but it's, it's several things. I think as we reach out to the community, people will understand that we need to go ahead and do these, these projects. They'll be good for us, and I think Raleigh, which is already a very nice city, even better place than we're still in. So with that, I'll stop, and if there are any questions, I'd be glad to respond, or if you anything else, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, well, thanks for your, thank your hard work. Uh, uh, do reach out to people, and look forward to an outstanding result on October 11th.